All right, everybody, welcome back to August 29th episode of Top Tier Podcast. My name is Pale L. Poppy. Got the chosen one here with us, mm-hmm. ready to give you guys uh, Monday's episode of Top Tier Podcast. Um, and we're ready. We got a bunch of topics this week. You know, one of my one of my homies got me. He went to Jamaica. Got me a bottle of alcohol. It's called Ray and Nephew's White Overproof Rum. It's sixty three percent. So I, I will be trying it today on the podcast. Uh, you got anything you drinking? Got anything you sipping on t- today? Uh, I'm not gonna give any uh, brands away, but I do have my little drink. You know, like, is it a whiskey mule? I got some whiskey okay. with some ginger beer. Whiskey Mule, I believe, is what it's called. Every every show. Shout so out far. AD, AD. For those who know people who listen to podcasts, you, you know who know me. You know AD. Shout out to AD. Forgive me and give me. A really appreciate it. The next time I travel, I'm gonna hook you up, man, big son. This is the second time he's done this. Getting me, you know, local alcohol. Where's mine at, AD? Travel. Come on now, come on, AD. You um, know where <laughs> I'm at. You know where I'm at. You know where to find me. Anyway, yes. Welcome into episode eight. And we're going to get it started. We're going to get it started and then off of popping. We're starting today with new music. Last time we didn't get to touch on new music last week on our uh, Monday pod. I was kind of upset by that, but there wasn't really anything that we were uh, interested in last week. But this week, yeah, this week, people came out. People came out and people are coming out. Like, you know, new Santi Gold is about to come I'm out. I'm coming tour. out. Santi Gold. Michi yes, Darko Santi Gold. of... Uh, Michi Darko of uh, Flatboy Zombies. He's admittedly my favorite, you know, rapper in Flatboy Zombies. He dropped his first solo project. We're gonna talk about that. That was your guy. Go in on it. Go in on it. This is you. I mean, we can we can get started. I mean, we, I, I thought we were gonna just go down the list and. No, go for it. We here. We here. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. The album was called uh, what was it called? Gothic, Gothic Luxury. Gothic. I, I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, it's called Gothic Luxury. Yeah. Um, his first solo project. I'm a big Flatboy Zombies fan. I got introduced to them in college. You know, I was really, I was really into that like psychedelic, like kind of stonerish kind of rap when I was in um, college, and that kind of fell off it in you know, recent years. And you know, I follow them on Twitter. I saw you release a new project. I was like, all right, cool, man. And I thought it was incredible. I, I mean, I loved it, man. But he's my favorite. He's one of my favorite rappers. Period. Michi Darko of Flatboy Zombies. Yeah. He's his first solo project. I just thought it was great, man. I really loved Kill Us All. Like that's my favorite song on the album on the album okay um and he's going on tour i'm definitely going to see him in november when he comes to la so you were mentioning that obviously like you just mentioned he is a um he's part of the duo right it's a duo it's trio. zombies it's a trio it's a trio okay yes yeah, so michi darko and this is his first Eric, architect and juice this is his first solo project this is his first solo project yeah no singles beforehand just just all of a sudden just uh, came out with the solo I project i think this i think he just all of a sudden yeah came out with a solo project people been asking for it for years label was like, he on they're Cobain. They, they think they're independent, man. I'm pretty sure they're independent. Yeah, LLC. Loma Vista Recordings. Yeah, I guess so. And they just have some problems for distribution. Yeah. Probably that's probably what it is. Yeah. So he just came out with a random solo I project. Think he talked about it, and fans have been asking about it. Cause I watched an interview with him, and so he said they've been asking for it for ten years. So he's been letting people know like, it's coming, it's long. coming. Dude, they've been around a long time. When I was looking at some of their old videos, they're from like 2011, 2012. Like some of their older, like when their little mixtapes they used to drop back in the day. Like, so, yeah, man. I mean, I'm a I'm a big Flatbush fan. I've never seen them though. I've seen so many other people. I'm like I love I love like I love like Tory Ma. I've seen Tory Ma and like Thundercat. Like I love these guys, but Flatbush is is up here for me, and I have never seen them in concert. It's just never it never lined up. Um, but it's really you know. And I want to get your thoughts on it, but it's it's especially Michi Darko. Like it's like an acquired taste. Like I don't think everybody's just gonna like like yeah, it's a really deep like raspy like kind of kind of grisly voice. You know, it's like yeah. a real psychedelic kind of like dark spiritual kind of vibes when you listen to his music. Like it's like it's like real grimy. It's, it's like when he's talking to you, he's like he's pulling you into like this really dark shrooms trip where he's just like you just wake up and you just see him and like. You just see him in chains and like in fur, and he's just like he's just rapping. Like he pull you, he's pulling you into his dimension, and that's not. It's really not for everybody. He does have a grittiness to him. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not turned off by the voice necessarily. It's really just like the music. Like I, I'm a big stickler for beats. Like my beat selection of what I listen to, particularly, is not in step with what he put out. 
in this and or Flatbush Zombies. And it, it sounded very Flatbush. Like Where that, are they all from? those beats sounded. They're from Brooklyn, man. Flatbush, New York. I'm pretty, that's why they Flatbush Zombies. Yeah. I can tell because there's a certain type but of Jamaican not, dudes. Yeah, it's like it's not boom Haitian. Bad. I think he's Haitian. I think he, I think he's Haitian. They're Caribbean. We'll say Caribbean dudes. Okay. Like, Caribbean rap, like East Coast rap. Like. Yeah, they have a certain sound that's just not in step with what I like to listen to. There was a particular song on it that I did like because the bass line, the structure of the song, they used, I'll just play it. The The bass line was particularly something that I hear often in the music, that in the hip hop that I listen to nowadays, that's what I like to hear, is that particular type of bass line you'll hear in a, in a second. And uh, he has like a, a, a layered organ, like to, for that lead melody, it's like these organs. Like obviously it's like synthesized organs and they kind of make it seem like, um, is it called the organ? No, what am I thinking of? Not organ. What's that, what's the uh, the deep piano? It's like this big, huge piano. It's like the organ? It's is not it organ, called the organ? Uh, I think it's the organ. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, let me play it, let me play it. You hear it? It's kind of like vampire-ish. Yeah, I can't hear it, I can't really hear it. I don't know if it's on my end. No, I hear it. That bass line? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that bass line a lot. And it's more atmospheric. I think I've gotten used to hearing this type of this type of because it's very it's very you know and, and i know and it's all the music but this especially it's like it's very atmospheric like especially you know what i mean if you really in that kind of psychedelic space like mm -hmm. I'm sure if you went to one of their concerts people probably just be all over the place um, i don't know being you know passing joints around is like a given i'm sure at one of their concerts but like it's very atmospheric and dark and like psychedelic like it really they convey like a lot of their music really conveys like a certain kind of vibe like if you come in already kind of on a psychedelic kind of vibe you just get pulled in like that's one of the biggest things that really that's what happened the first time i listened to them okay you know i can I tell kind of pulled I, into it like i'm surprised you didn't listen to the joey badass project because this is kind of and i've heard some of the songs i've okay. heard some of the songs like kind of similar week, a little bit to, um, yeah because and they you know they collaborate on projects like i can see it. i'm pretty sure he was on the beast coast album beast coast was like joey badass and like flatbush and I don't know. I don't think the underachievers were on there, and some of the ASAP dudes, I think. But it was like all those like Flatbush, New York, the Caribbean dudes. Movies, yeah. They came together and had like an Avengers type album. Like mm -hmm. that was their Avengers moment, you know. Like a Dreamville project type thing. Like a Dreamville project, yeah, kind of okay. like that. But just everybody from that city, like from that area. Everybody from that area who was making that kind like of that. music. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. And I have it on vinyl. And I, I didn't even really like that album like that because it was like which one? It didn't feel like they was making. It was called. Uh, I think it's Beast Coast oh, okay. Escape from New York. I think that's what it's called. Because I know I you're saying you're going to get this one on cassette tape, bro. What? No, oh, yeah. Clown bro, this. I, I, love, I, love, I love the album. Cassette and tape? Cassette tape? Uh, it's you don't not even have a cassette player. I, I don't. But it's, remember, I have a vinyl player. I have all, you can probably see it where I'm pointing my finger, like uh -huh. right here. That's, that's it right there. Um, and I don't even really use it like that. It's just novelty. It's just sometimes I feel like, all right, I'm going to spin a record. Like I'm in a kind of vibe on the couch i don't want to watch a movie i don't want to really be on my phone i kind of just want to be with my thoughts i'll put a record on it's the same thing with the cassette tape like novelty i might like ah my phone's dead i can't find my charger stop probably going to bed no I you get, won't. i have the cassette right there no, I you will not put it on and just, just go to just go to sleep too. i highly doubt it bro you'll probably listen to that shit one time and be like i, no, I know how i am no it's probably true you have to rewind <laughs> that shit bro you have to rewind the fucking tape you're not going to do that shit, bro. Stop. You probably listened to it one time. Um, probably. In other music, obviously the biggest album that came out this week was DJ Khaled's God Did. Oh, I didn't even hear about that. But You didn't hear about it? Mm -mm. But you heard about Michi Darko? You didn't hear? I mean, I guess that's your... That's your I follow him on Twitter. Yeah, that's your, that's your area. I don't follow... Niche. Outside of like Instagram models and Twitter models, I don't you follow just, DJ anybody DJ Khaled else. was everywhere, bro. He was marketing and everywhere. Like crypto crypto dudes, like the finance guy. That's that's it. I he follow was like marketing a handful everywhere. of artists. 
He was everywhere, talking to everybody. God did. You didn't see any of those videos? God did. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, to me, loop. my algorithm completely dodged that. Yeah, I guess so. For good, I mean, good riddance, honestly, because God did not. Good riddance. In my opinion, God did not. This album was so trash to me. <laughs> this album was so trash. Everybody, Bro, Khaled is Khaled albums are garbage to me. His albums are not that good. I mean, he'll, but she, that's just the way that he makes music. He is more of an orchestrator of finding people to put together on a song. I hate the way he cobbles together the music. If he had, if he had like production skill, I don't know if he does. I don't know if he doesn't. But if he had production level skill, and I'm sure he has credits on it because it's DJ Khaled album, but. I don't think he's making these beats. I don't think he's actually the one that's engineering these beats and putting them together. And he's not a musician, so he's not rapping on it. Besides, you know, we the best. Besides, you you know, you hearing we the best all the time or God did or whatever the theme of the album is, that, that particular album is, uh, you won't hear him on the album. So I think that when he's cobbling together, it's fast food, like it's fast food music. It's no different than like when you look at like a behind the table, behind the counter of in and out and you see all these niggas like flying around and somebody will put the bread down and then somebody will put the sauce on it and then somebody else will come around and put the meat on it. That's what he does, essentially. He just finds all the different parts. And I think that's why it sounds so like, I don't know what the word is. It sounds like there's like a distance in understanding because that's what he does. Like he'll literally just be like, mm -hmm. okay, let me buy that beat off of you. Okay, let me. I, I'm gonna pay this person to come and I'm, lay a verse down. And then I'm gonna pay that person over there, and they're gonna come and do the hook. Uh, then I'm gonna send that to somebody else. You know, that's just how he makes the music, and I just don't like it. I don't think that's the proper way to make music, personally. You can collaborate with it people. It feels very. It feels very business corporate corporate -y. Like, like he's not a computer, but I can see in the future an AI doing that. Right. That's right. the crazy part. The AI is like, you know what? It. We'll make these beats. We'll have this person come in, and it, and it might not even be advanced enough that it's going to do the next thing I just said, but they're like, all right, I'll make these beats, then I'll digitally hire. I'll, I'll send Meg to Stallion. I feel like this kind of song would be good for Meg. I'll, I'll, I'll wire over a contract to Meg for 100 k to do a verse. Right. And I'll spend 100 k on this person to come do a verse. He made the beat. The AI made the beat, gets all these people in the songs, and actually makes the album. It's like, we'll just replace Kyle, what Kyle does. It's just so fast it. food, bro. It's so fast food. Yeah. And it's like. But then they'll yeah. take someone's likeness. They'll take someone's likeness. They'll just have Meg come in and do a couple lines and then digitize her voice with the AI and it'll just make the whole album, the whole DJ Khaled style album using buying people's likenesses and, and creating AI beats. 20 years. You can see just, it. Just the wrong way to go about it. I'm surprised we didn't. We mentioned all this stuff but we never covered the uh the fn what was the guy's name the computer rapper fn meta oh i didn't even want to talk about that because that was a clown show to me it was yeah like, it was really disrespectful to say really disrespectful and kind of nasty so we didn't even have to talk about that <laughs> but this guy did project it, i mean i guess people received it well the one thing that they really did see uh seem to really enjoy salute the one thing that they really did seem to enjoy was the jay-z verse on track two uh -huh. and you know, we're young men, Gen Z. I don't know if we necessarily, the older people listening to this or watching this, I don't know. They probably don't think that we are sophisticated enough or of age, I should say, to be speaking on Jay-Z. But I was not impressed. I was not impressed. Everybody was talking about how great the fucking verse was. And, oh, this is one of the best verses that Jay-Z has ever. Top five dick verses. Riders. Just like Kyle, like Michi, Michi Darko is biased. You get dick ride. It's just like, I don't know if that, if I agree. Let's play some of it. Because to me, it was just like regular. It's a little bit of the hook. My heart. You know the flow is nice. I like it, man. I, don't get me wrong. Like, it's it's nothing mind blowing, but I think it's very solid. Some bars on it. He goes in forever, though. This is an eight minute song. I would like him to switch it up a little bit. He's doing the same kind of flow. That is Jay Z, bro. What much can you ask? You know, nigga is a '90s rapper. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know if we are sophisticated enough to be the ones that are talking about we're not Jay-Z verse. an old head will come clip us up because I don't know real enough. quick we were like children when he was like blueprint came out when I was like three I'm pretty sure that's the 2000s right see like I don't know 2001 don't, right I don't know bro I don't know if we're the ones that should be talking about it I just I'm not impressed I'm not impressed I've heard better Jay-Z verses that's all I have to say I mean I think I, I think I could say that I think I could say that I don't think that that's blasphemy to say that I've heard better Jay-Z verses pound cake was an excellent verse yeah, Pound Cake was dope. That's one of his best. I mean, listen, as a, a new guy who did not grow up on it, you know what I mean? Like, he was making music way before I was even conceived. I was in another life, in, in the astral somewhere, you know, didn't know didn't know any, any, didn't know who Jay-Z was, you know? Um, I don't think we, we're qualified to speak on it. I feel like you got to grow up in it. Like, I'm going to be 40, and people going to be talking about Drake, 2016 era and Drake and talking crazy like you didn't you weren't there bro like you weren't there so i don't want to hear you talking about it i would sound like an old head yeah but i mean don't you have to give some grace to us though don't you think i mean a verse is a verse at the end of the day a verse is a verse and and, and, and even if you listen to his whole discography i don't think anyone can tell you you weren't there i'm still listening to the whole catalog I've listened to all his music. I can critique it now. I do see what they're I've saying though, because you didn't music, you didn't yeah. evolve with it, right? You didn't see how evolutionary it was at the time, how innovative it was at the time. You didn't feel it. You didn't feel it if you didn't live it. I, so I kind of get that, but like I mean I don't know. Everybody can be a critic. We were just talking about that. Like everybody is a critic. Everybody has the right to be a critic though. But this God did, man. God did not <laughs> for yeah. for this project. God did not. Um, there is another record I th- or album that I that I heard. It's called Three Sacred Souls by Three Sacred Souls. Came out of nowhere. Look back at their discography on Apple Music, at least not Spotify or anything else. I didn't really do any other additional research. They don't have any other projects. All the singles that they had available on Apple Music were from this record, this album. And it's like a 70s R&B soul album made by a trio i don't know if they're you know if it's like a drummer and a bassist and a singer i don't know if it's i don't know what the orchestration of uh the group is but the music was really really good bro really really good music i want to play some of it because i want to get your thoughts on it the the little bit i heard from when we were talking yesterday with groovy seemed like these guys would be like great festival festival acts they would fuck it up they would fuck up the game. I'm going to play this one. Really, really like what I heard from yesterday. It's a little slow now. You know the type of rock, the, the type of music that we rocking with. Like, I was really thinking about putting one of these as a, as a deep cut today. Mm-hmm. You should. I got another one. I got another one in the pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like Mm -hmm. that 70s soul inspired. Got the harmonies in the background, a little bit of chorus. They could bring it back, man. I'm telling you, man. You said R&B is dead. You said R&B is dead today. What if there was like a new renaissance where people just started trying to like kind of use this as the basis but like add a modern edge to it no i don't think so well the thing about it is like so you hear this right and it's like super good right just super quality music super quality music and to that point about r&b is dead r&b is dead in its original form that doesn't mean that you won't have some people that are heavily inspired from the past that come out through the woodworks or whatnot or want to experiment with a certain sound of old and put out some quality music that's reminiscent of old when R&B was popping, when R&B was R&B. But to this particular album, you hear how infused with old, you see how inspired it is, right? This mm-hmm. is like stylistics, right? Like Smokey Robinson type. Like love Mar- letter. Kinda, there's some hero. records on here that sounds like, uh, like Marvin Gaye type lyrics and type vocals. To me, it's like, 
I was starting to think to myself, like, remember Silk Sonic came out last year mm -hmm. and they swept the Grammys, right? Because all that, al but all that album was like inspired like by 70s music, right? It was all soul. You can always point to something where it was like, oh, that sounds like the Jackson 5 or, oh, that sounds like a Stevie Wonder joint. To me, and I, I don't know if you listened to the album in whole and you didn't really listen to everything on this album, but you said you, said you heard some of it. I played mm -hmm. some of it or whatever. This sounds so much more raw and so much more inspired. It sounds authentic. It sounds like a legitimate love letter. That's it sounds the like word. people who have studied an era, studied a genre. This sounds it's authentic a, compared to Silk Sonic's artificial. Yeah, Silk Sonic sound more poppy, more for a mainstream audience, less authentic. And if more, it's sort of formulaic. What's what's the like, difference there? It's like getting a Philly cheesesteak in California. And it might be pretty damn good. Or in and out in Texas. <laughs> or in and out in Texas. And it might be it might be solid, but it's not from the roots. What's the difference? That's probably what it is. Like how does that work? Maybe the, I think the I just think the level of detail and authenticity they wanted to have was different. I'm not knocking, you know, the Silk Sonic joint, but you know, they came in, we're gonna make we're gonna make some good records. I'll it's gonna it. have a, it's gonna have a little bit of that that error in it and it's going to be for a mainstream audience. Boom. These guys was like, we want to create a record that's so authentic. It sounds like it, we literally released during that era. Yeah. Like we wanted to feel like we went back in time, released it during that era, then removed ourselves from history and released it in 2020. And it does sound like that, bro. It sounds super vibey. That super, was the super goal. Vibey. We wanted to, because I feel like if someone heard a Silk Sonic, they'd know it was a newer song. Even though, it, you know, like, what, would you agree if you just, a person never heard it, and you played it for like someone who grew up in, er in that era. Wouldn't you think they would? They would know it's a more modern. They would know. Thing? They would know. But this is, you know, someone wouldn't know. Oh, when did this come out? That might be the question. It sounds too polished. This sounds raw. And I don't even know if they're using real instruments. I don't know if these are studio instruments. You know, and I, this sounds like a literal, literal like late '60s, early '70s joint. Mm -hmm. Straight up, yeah, bro. Let's taste some more. It's soft though. It's soft. Like it's that's not the vibe. But if you look it for an R&B vibe, just something to chill to. Some from the 2020s, some from more modern day. That's just like, yo, like, let me chill. Let me bring a lady through. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. let me just put on a little something soft. That's the one that turns to three sacred souls. Anything else with new music? We mentioned Santi uh, well, Gold we already. Mentioned, we mentioned Santi Gold. Uh, the Joey Badass album came out oh, not too long ago. Migos. Migos. What Migos. the fuck is happening with Migos, bro? It's sad. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Migos probably was... Just a lot of beef, probably a lot of beef, and we don't know about it. Migos has been putting out some ass. So like, Migos has fallen off. Like, let's be honest. They put out singles They put out singles the last couple of years since Culture They put out an album last year. That do... I didn't see no... I didn't know about that because that shit went dumpster juiced here. I that mean, shit they was sold. That shit wasn't gold, wasn't silver, wasn't bronze. That shit was toilet paper. Tear. They sold some joints. That shit was not, was not popping. And I, I thought, thought it was a pretty guys. nice project. I don't go back and listen to it because Migos has played out, but I thought it was a pretty solid project. Migos is done. Now, I can, what I can see Apparently. is if they, you know, one, I, think, I can see one of them, maybe two of them, and it's not going to be it's pretty much everybody but Offset. Not Offset, but Takeoff. Takeoff? But Takeoff. Takeoff might surprise, but the other two, I can see them solo careers being okay if they really come out with like a really popping out. Well, remember in, what was that, 2019, I think? They all three of them had solo joints. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I don't know if that was beef. I don't, I don't think it was beef. No, because I think they were like, just trying to. Flatbush. They're doing solos as well. Yeah, just and build their own personal touring. brand. Same thing we see. They see that often, bro. Michael Jackson left the Jackson Five. Like Paul McCartney left the Beatles. You know, shit happens. Mm -hmm. You can't. I mean, they, those niggas were together for what, like eight years? You mm -hmm. know, and if you're counting last year's album, I don't know when that was made or finished. I should say. But if you're counting that album, that's like 10 years of just solid track record as a group. For a rap group, that's a long time. That's a long time. Like, how long does N.W.A. last? You know what I mean? How long does Junior mm -hmm. Mafia last? You know? Dog Pound. I think, like, I think four to five years for like a big group. Yeah, that shit doesn't last that long. Probably like four to five so years. So kudos to them. And then to they're them. on solo projects. But it is sad. they might sad. do a reunion tour or something like that later. 
I doubt it, bro. It seems like, and, and then you, if you look at, like, I haven't done too much research on it, so I won't just speak on it that much because I don't really have any opinion of it. I don't know the information right off the bat. But Offset is, like, suing QC, their label. Mm-hmm. He's suing QC. Apparently, he's saying, he's claiming that they're trying to take over his personal, um, his personal solo career records. I think it's really interesting. Like, there's, there's something going on behind the scenes. I don't have all, of the, all of the information, like I mentioned. But there's something going on there that's really sad to witness you see Quavo and Offset or not uh, Offset Quavo and Takeoff are doing their own personal projects releasing their own singles they released a single last uh, week as did Offset so they're not working together right now and there's some rumors floating around if you know you know I'm not going to say anything about it but if you know you know that it's just like I don't think like I don't want to say too much about it but I, I'm just not sure if it's going to be reconciled anytime soon I'll say it that way I definitely think we know that Offset has a solo album coming out pretty soon. He's already mentioned it. Offset is incoming. But, you know, Quavo and Takeoff, they doing their own thing. Unconfu, what they call it. Unconfu. Migos! Migos! That's sad. Yeah, it's too bad. Sparky! We had a topic that we wanted to get to for like the last two pods. Really interesting topic. You said you saw an article that was talking about Gen Z and their relationship and their habitual habits with high fashion and luxury brands yes. in terms yeah, of ar- fashion, yeah, in terms of clothing. Yeah, shit. I saw an article that, you know, the taste and trends are changing, you know, with, and that's, you know, we're in a recession right now, in a global recession, actually, so it makes sense that the numbers are going down. But, you know, gen- the relationship right now with Gen Z, from the article I read, talked about how, you know, with inflation and higher, you know, higher cost of living, people are not buying high fashion at least gen zers who are who make an average amount of money you know these are people pretty fresh out of college if not in college they're not spending as much money as they did previously to buy designer in luxury clothing um and the article suggested that they would come up with more budget options but that in my opinion that would tarnish that would tarnish the reputation you think givenchy and prada you're thinking and they won't do it they won't do it like, the whole reason why they have a price point that they just don't uh, uh, they don't go underneath. It's because that's, you, you, that, that's you the level your that they brand. Need. Like you, ch- you cheapen your brand, and, and then eventually, next thing you know, you at they send you at Urban Outfitters. You Zara, you at, <laughs> yeah, Zara. You know what I mean? Like, so you know, I kind of wanted this to evolve more into a conversation about like, why buy high fashion and not buy stocks and crypto? That's a waste. Because uh, everybody's why? a part of the cycle. Everybody's pro- part of the programming. It's all programming. It's literally the cycle of you're not rich. If you're wearing clothes that say that you're not rich, people are going to know you're not rich. If you're wearing and this is it, quiet. It doesn't it doesn't even stop as yeah, wealth is quiet, but niggas don't know that. So if you're if you're poor or if you're middle class and you're not rocking Balenciaga, you're not you're not rocking Prada. Sound like uh, that Blueface song, Balenciaga, Prada, Louis, Prada, Louis, <laughs> Givenchy, Balenciaga. If you're not rocking that stuff, people are gonna. You think people are gonna see that you don't have that money, even though you don't have mm-hmm. the money. So what do you have to do? You got to start looking at the Joneses. You got to start trying to keep up. So what you do? This is my, this is my if you go and you buy, man. if you buy something that you know people know costs eight hundred dollars, and they see you wearing it because everyone's looking at it with consumer culture. If they see that you have $800 on you, on your person, they're going to be like, oh, that's $800 worth of nickel. <laughs> Essentially, that's what it is. I don't, this is my thing, though. Like, you know, and we both went to a private school, you know, in high school. When I saw, like, the wealthiest people at that school, and I've heard people say, like, you know, when it comes to the men at the school who have money, a lot. Of, I've seen dudes wear pay less looking pay less looking shoes and they would wear them until their until their toes were popping out busted and the only way you knew they were rich this is a real story like i was like i think i was playing football and i was like in the like in the like infirmary room or in the like the trainer room and they were like i guess I had an injury and some like, a guy came in we all know has a lot of money and they, he's to big toes popping out one of his shoes and they're like don't you think you should get some new shoes he's like yeah but then when you see this guy's family pull up they're pulling up in mercedes and rarries and Big houses, but that—that's what I mean by like you wouldn't know he was rich unless you actually came to his house. 
you don't see people flexing like that. But who are you to, you know, if you have money, to, what do you think about that? Like, do, do you well, see designer, yourself as we someone who, if you had that kind of money, be frugal? Because he's wearing, you would never know. This guy looks like a regular guy until his parents pull up or you go to his house. And he's wearing that shit till it breaks. He's not, you don't see this guy having designer fit after designer fit after designer fit. Designer is for poor people. It is. It's just that's what it is. Designers for poor people. Now you can have a little bit of money, right? And you can you can go and buy the designer, sure. But you don't see Jeff Bezos wearing design. You don't see Elon Musk wearing design. They're not flaunting the brand, at least. They may have some nice like quality Jobs. shit on. Yeah. yeah. Jay Z, Kanye West these days, even though he has been rocking that little Balenciaga fit for a while now. But <laughs> you know what he's I mean? He's marketing like, you don't himself see- though. A lot of his time, he's wearing his own shit. You just uh, don't see like wealth, himself. like real, real hardcore wealth. You don't see these dudes wearing a fucking brand that says, hey, this shirt right here is worth $500. These shoes right here are worth $800. These pants that you see everybody else, all the athletes wearing, you know that these are worth $500. You can't even get them. Right. These glasses, look at the brand. You can't They'd even rather buy assets. Exactly. And that's the thing. You get caught up in the cycle. Like I said. Designer is for poor people. Like assets are for rich. Designer is for poor. Assets yeah, are for only, rich. And I, and I don't even. I only have like I have like two real bottles of cologne that are nice. And I didn't even. I only bought one of them. And my dad bought me the other one. I have a whole bunch of samples. But like, that's the only thing I would ever conceive of buying that was like real high fashion is like the colognes. I'm talking like the two to four hundred dollar bottles. You know what I mean? Like, but like my thinking is. I don't I just don't get it like I don't why don't you have to like bro. run around and let people know like you got money the only way you would know I had money is you pulled up in my car because I'm gonna be wrong I'm being some I'm gonna be in some high shit like in a car you well, know or you, if you know, pull up in my house yeah you would know but that's you it. know that fashion you fashion is the biggest export of culture it's just what it is and fashion isn't just necessarily exclusive to clothing or to shoes it's fashion is driving the beamer fashion is wearing the chain yeah. around your neck fashion is uh hosting a a certain uh like if you're on a plane you're in first class that's fashion I'm posting the pic of that that's that's the biggest export of culture especially today with with social media now you really got to keep up with the joneses because you see everybody else people you don't even fucking know who are doing it bigger than you supposedly air quotes doing it bigger mm-hmm. than you but you don't know that the niggas is broke as shit. Them niggas broke broke as you. Mm-hmm. But they just happened to scrape together some shit that they can't afford to spend. And they spent it on whatever they said they were going to spend it on because they could flaunt that shit. And now everybody else sees it and it's like, oh shit, I saw that one image. And now I know that that person is rocking with more than I, than I can afford. Even though you don't even know. You don't even know. The one thing I have noticed though, and I also want to set up a dichotomy. I'll probably get to that first. There is a dichotomy though. That is kind of interesting because it's like even though people are poor let's speak, let's speak mainly about gen z because we are very into fashion people have been into fashion for a long time but our code our generation is very very into fashion and like i said fashion is it's it's non-exclusive it could be anything but speaking mainly about clothing and branding look at something like supreme right like people i think that there is a dichotomy between people that are into brands and people that are into like the iconography of like like the idealization of the design you know what i mean like there's some people Mm -hmm. that are actually into the art of fashion and there's some people that are just most people i think that are just into the brand have you noticed that yeah there are people who just it's like i'm telling you we sent this video we sent this video on twitter there's this guy he literally looked like big bear he was wearing, he was, he put on his jacket that looked like he had, it was green, and he, it was like yellowish green, and it was all furred up. And this guy came up to him, he was like, bro, what are you wearing? You can't afford it. He was like, what do you mean? You can't afford this. This is Givenchy. This is Givenchy. He's like, you literally look like Big Bird. It's like, bro, step off. You literally look like Big Bird. That shit ain't hot. Take that shit off. You can't afford this. This is $800. Right. I know you remember it. Because the brand now, says I watched all, that right? video like 50 times. It made me laugh so hard. Because not brand. anyone can afford the brand. Yeah. But nigga, you can't afford the brand either. 
you can't afford to be wearing them clothes looking raggedy like that. Mismatch, nigga. You can't. You're not on this. You ain't on this. Uh, this, this is eight hundred dollars. You can't. This is Givenchy. Fuck out of here. I mean, I have more respect if it was Givenchy that actually looked fire, like it was actually a, a solid looking, looking piece of clothing. But like, yeah. well, I feel like these designer brands are clown. They clown the poor because they put out absolute ass. They put out absolute bullshit, and they just sit back and just wait to see it sell out. They know it's who's like, buying, guys, bro. Do whatever you want. We, this is a tax on the poor. This is the tax on the on the, the stupid among the poor. They know who's buying it, bro. There's such an obsession with branding, bro. The consumer culture is getting way, way, way out of hand. Way, way, way out of hand. And it, it, like, I really try to put a lot of faith in, in, in the consumer. You know, if you listen to some of the previous pods, we probably have talked about it. I probably mentioned it myself. I do think that brands and companies need to put more trust and more faith in the consumer. But at the end of the day, consumers are fucking stupid. Consumers would gobble up anything and everything because of greed and because of what we're talking about, which is that people want to look a certain way. You have to, mm. that's, that's what people see is your external. So if you got the bling bling, if you got the Gucci. My thinking is, the, if you just go to a DC, like Nordstrom's or go to like, and you just are talented at putting together a solid fit, you just match colors, you kind of look at what looks good on your body, and come up with something good and got some nice, you know, nice little stones. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're good. And you come with some swag. I'm talking about men, you know. I don't really think you need to be doing more. Like, I don't I don't get it. Like, like you said, like, dudes will have nice stuff and you don't know. Like, I know that Elon Musk and these guys, and you know they have Tom Ford suits. Yeah. But it's not like the suit has, like, on the shoulder, Tom Ford. It's just a nice looking suit, but you don't you wouldn't know the suit is three, four thousand dollars. That's what I mean by yeah. wealth whispers. You know what I mean? Like they have nice, practical, nice shit that you don't even know. It, they just look yeah. normal, but they're on their person. Their shit is actually really expensive. I mean, Taylor, Taylor. Yeah, people made. don't look at it that way. That's why I have a lot of respect for the people that are actually like, wow, like you know, this is a genuine because most people are online shopping too. Like most people aren't going into the store and saying like, "Let me try this on." How do I feel in it? How do I? How does it? How does it portray me? You know, do is this worth the price? Am I doing this for myself because I really enjoy this fabric because I really enjoy this garment, or am I doing this because I know people are going to see it? It's a trending. It's a trending uh, piece of clothing. Are you doing it for that reason? some narcissistic reason or are you doing it for a genuine love uh, or genuine want genuine desire Mm -hmm. most people aren't doing it like that but then i also have noticed there's a wave of like dlc right like all these digital things right like we play video games if you're not if you don't have a certain skin what do they call you if you don't have a, a skin that's like people know you did i know skin or poor exactly exactly that's what they call you so it's getting <laughs> even more ingrained into our society. This DLC, yeah. this NFT. I admittedly have a lot of skins in video games like Apex and Fortnite. And admittedly. it's culture. More than I, I mean, like to admit. It's expressing culture, yeah. but that's the biggest export of culture is fashion. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because that's just what everybody sees first. I'm kind of going over in, in circles a little bit, but, you know. And the last thing I will say is, like, the, I have noticed that, like, here being in Texas, like, people don't care. Like, I've spoken to people about that, too. Like people do not they 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 care, but they don't they don't judge. You'll see certain people that you can tell is like, oh, they're trying to do something. I see that you tried to put an outfit together. Oh, I I see in those shoes that you got on. Like, oh, okay, those are trending shoes. I see you. You're in. You know, you're in that in that zeitgeist to culture. You know what you're, you're you're rocking with. You're doing that on purpose. That's deliberate. But they don't see me, and see my branding right coming from L.A in san francisco where it's like you don't have on this and that and that you don't have a brand on your chest you have a brand on your shoes people are going to look at you like oh that's regular that's a no skin that's a no skin Mm -hmm. they don't think of it that way so i think it is also a state to state thing because people out here do not dress bro they don't dress and if they do dress like i said they're not looking at you and judging like oh i like those i like the like oh your outfit is better than mine i don't really look at people bro that's like that's the crazy thing it's like your fit has to be like fucking on point for me to make a mental note like damn that dude is swagging it's rare you be looking like, at I the shoes don't weekend. stop every once i do you be i do looking but at not, the shoes? it's not i went out this weekend i can't think of one time i look at the shoes 
I went out. I went out yesterday. I can't think of one. Not yesterday. The day before, on Friday night. I can't think of the t- any time I looked at some dude's shoes. You might not have been in. The, I just can't think of one time. You might not have been in the arena where you needed to look at it, like where you felt the insecurity to look around. But if you That's out at a party, if you out at a party or a function that you know is of a certain caliber, you're gonna be looking around. Yeah, if it's, it, it has to depend. Like I'm just. Like, these are places I go all the time. Like, we just go to, like, we go to these kind of, like, social breweries in L.A., like Angel City and, like, Arts District Brewery. We go there, and they're, they're, like, they're, like, breweries, but they have, you know, they play, you know, they play good music and, you know, neon lights, and it's a lot of young people, but, mm-hmm. you know, dancing. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking at nobody's shoes because it's packed to hell. Yeah. I'm more worried about getting COVID and, and getting my drink than getting I am some looking at some and getting some money. That's true, too. <laughs> so, I'm not, I'm not looking at fits, especially I'm not looking at dude's fit. You know what I mean? Like, but if it's like a well lit, like I'm looking at fits. more social dancing event, I'm looking at fits. But it's rare. It has been so long since I've been to like an event like that. We just kind of frequent the same kind of bars that I'm not even. I don't even think about it. The social media is going to change the game, bro. I mean, I the the what do you call it? Web three. The Web three version of social media is going to change the game. I'm already on it. Web three is going to be crazy. I'm already on it. I'm waiting for it to take off. If it takes off, shit. Shit. People are going to be judged on a whole nother level. It's going to be a I'm whole I'm not even going to lie, level. though. I, I got, I'm, we talking about high fashion, but if Web3 takes off and I have the money like I think I'm going to have, I'm going to have some pieces. I'm not going to waste my money on it. The only money I'm going to spend on high fashion is the, is the interest, a little bit of interest I've dedicated to high fashion. But I will have some high fashion. Smart way to go about it, I guess. But Smart dudes will spend it. their principal will spend their principal for real investments to get them off the ground on high fashion. Yeah. But if you're a little you're five percent, you're one percent of like your ten percent or let's say five percent of your one percent of that little interest, of that five percent interest that you are getting. So it's like a very small percentage. If that's enough for you to buy a lot of high fashion, I would do it. I don't hey, see a Jay-Z. problem. Jay Z said, "If you can't afford to buy it twice, you can't afford it." Yeah, I think those are pretty easy. That's a pretty easy uh, rule to go by. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty standard. I like that rule. That's actually interesting. Thinking about houses too. Like, if you wanted to buy a six million dollar house and you got you thirty that's million dollars, that's an investment. Or something. I think he's talking more about like, you know, just like shit that just, de- shit just depreciates the minute you buy it. Yeah, you know? the bullshit. Like a car. Yeah, the bullshit. Like, like a car. Jewelry. Or like a, some jewelry. Or, yeah. Stuff like that. Speaking about advertising, we could transition that into our next topic. Nigeria has banned British slash foreign, but mostly British, I think is what they were going for. British models from being included in their advertisements and voiceovers for advertisements. Thoughts? Um, I like it because from the article I read, they talked about how it's like how in a country with 200 million people, are you having a hard time finding indigenous models and indigenous voice actors to be in a commercial? And it's usually British people. They didn't say if they were white or black, but I'm going to assume they're white. Probably. To be in all this marketing. Because why else would they put this? Sense. Sense. Why but a lot of this is ownership, man. Clearly, these are white companies marketing to people in Nigeria. So that's the only thing I'm thinking. Because that doesn't even make any sense to me. Uh, other than it's probably some serious cooning. If it is brands that, that that are owned by Nigerian people and they're only hiring white people to be models, that's like sounds like serious cooning to me. But <laughs> but other than that, I, I I think it's a good step. I think it's a good step in improving, you know, breaking down the European beauty standard and improving people loving themselves in Nigeria. It's for and the representation. It's for the representation mm-hmm. and anti-colonialism. I think it's right. where the is the ground roots of it is the anti-colonialism, like you said. If it's, if it's over 50% of the models that you see are not even from the country, they don't even represent the country as the people of the country that are, they make up the majority of the country. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That makes no sense. It's not, that doesn't make, that's not practical. So you need to have some representation there. And the anti-colonialism shit, completely understand. Like you said, it's, it's ownership. It's taking back. But, but what, I, what I meant by ownership is, you know, if they don't own the companies that are doing this marketing, what can you really say? But if it's like they own these companies and they're only hiring white models, then I'd kind of be like, 
It's a little coonish. Like, well, I don't know. See, we, I didn't see that covered very in depth in the article. There wasn't a lot of coverage on it in depth, so I didn't see. I didn't see that either. My question is: obviously, we know the black the backlash is going to be racism. Is it racist? I don't think it's racist because it's the country. It's the it's the comp- It's like you said, it's anti-colonialism, and it's the country. This is Nigeria. Why are you having white models advertising to what seems to be a white audience in a country with West Afri- indigenous West African people? It doesn't even make any sense to me. It just kind of seems like it just propagates that whole study they do in the United States, where it's like they'll give a black a black child, and they've done this study like. They've done this study since like the what like the early 1900s, where they'll give a black child a white doll and a black doll, and because of all the, every time you look on the turn on TV and look in the media, you see a white child, that condition, a white person. This conditions you to think that that's what you would want to be. So they'll give a, a child a white doll and a black doll, and the black child will pick the white doll. Majority of the time, we want to create a situation where we break down these beauty standards, in especially in an African country with 200 million people. You would think they would pick the. I, I, this study, I don't, to my knowledge, hasn't been done in Nigeria, but I could see it being along those same lines. Where, I, all right, we when we're pu- putting out models for products, we want these to be the people of the local population. And I can imagine if something like that happened with the African American or FBA Foundation of Black American Community, I could see that study eventually flipping to most people picking the black doll. So I, I kind of agree with it along those lines. It's something, it's something in a similar vein. Yes. Yes. I agree. I don't really have much to add to it. I thought that I was going to be taking the controversial state. Uh, uh, state. But what state, was, I, we talked about, you said you're going to have a controversial state. That's what I thought. I thought I was taking the con- of saying that I agree. I, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see the racism in it. Because a lot of people are trying to turn to that and say that it's racist because, and maybe it's a false equivalency saying like, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not um, racially educated enough to, to, to be able to articulate it but people are trying to say the equivalence is if someone in America were to say like let's say Vogue if Vogue were to say we're banning white people no 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 they're making the opposite they're saying if Vogue were to say we're banning black models that's the equivalency that they're, that they're trying to make but see they're looking at it from an American perspective that's another thing you know, and I've had to learn this, but they're looking at it from the American perspective, where the American is a, is a very multicultural country, country. It doesn't really make sense to say that in America versus a country where it's just across the lines, 99% of people or 95% of people are indigenous West African. It, it, you know what I mean? And, and, and yeah. then in that country, it doesn't, it literally does not make any sense that most of the models are white and most of the voice actors are white. It does not make any sense. It doesn't. It would be stupid in America to say that because it's so multicultural. You know, it's still very segregated, but there's a lot of people here that can be marketed to. But in that country where it's just super, it's super across the board, a group of people from a part of the world, and and most of the models don't look like them, I kind of get that. And a lot of it is because of colonialism. I think that's fair. But people are going to try to hold it to the same standard of how we look at it in America. Yeah. What do you call? Is that like a cognitive dissonance? I think a lot of people just are just looking for attention. They're just reactionary, and that's like everybody. I, I can even be a reactionary at times, but I just feel like it's just you know people of different sides, of different perspectives, and different arguments propagating a narrative, and they're just they're gonna just take it and just that's racist, that's anti-white, yeah. and they're just that's already what the kind of time they're on anything that's anti-white supremacy, which. I guess it's kind of true, is against their way of life, even on a continent in a country that has nothing to do with what, they, what they're doing. But it's yeah. just a new talking point. It's more content we don't for a political content creator. You know? We don't understand it here. We can't really speak, even with just an article, we can't even really speak on the depths of what this really means and the history of it. But I just think it's interesting. It's interesting to, to talk about and, and leave to the audience to kind of go into and do their own further research on I agree. Do some research. Interesting topic. All right, moving on. What do we got? 
You want to talk about this? Uh, Someone played this recently on a meme and it made me laugh so it's hard. It's a joint, I bro. I, I cannot. I can't even remember. Somebody played this on a meme recently. It was so funny. It made me think of that of this song because it was like I think this song I, apparently Snoop Dogg wrote this for his daughter. Mm -hmm. That's really sweet, but like beautiful, beautiful. Damn, bro, I'm so pissed. It was the meme was so funny. It was like some stupid shit because the internet. I know you're going to. You think they I was seeing like LeBron. I don't know the words. You said LeBron. You see that video? Of LeBron trying to rap along and he just doesn't know any of the words. <laughs> he's no, so LeBron funny. is hilarious, man. I he's feel like funny. he's a he'll be a cool dude to be friends with in real life. And Kanye too, until he starts snapping, then you gonna get the fuck out of my house. But I still be cool to him. Say, so, hey, if you want some even kill, man, come through. But if you're not feeling it. Do not come through. He starts getting irate, and then it's like, oh god, nigga. All right, bro, you gotta go. But I feel medication. like when I feel like I feel like when he's on a good he's on a good level, he's chilling. I feel like he's a cool homie. Who girl that you is? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, let's talk about this uh, Corey Kenshin shit. I'll let you give yeah, us uh, our intro to that topic. Yeah, basically, and I I'm, I watch, I subscribe to him. I watch a couple of his videos. I'm not the biggest Corey Kenshin fan. This is a really big trending topic, and it's kind of, you know, it's re relevant to us as, you know, relatively recent content creators. And, you know, Corey Kenshin is a really big YouTuber. He, he, he's, a, he's a gamer. Like, you know, he, he reacts to video games. He plays a lot of horror games. He's a very famous YouTuber. I think he's like 7 million subscribers. Damn. And he's kind of having like a, you know, a little, little kerfuffle with, with YouTube. <laughs> And he exposed YouTube for their, you know, racist practices. And what happens? He uploaded a new horror game. I don't remember what the horror game is. But it's a relatively new horror game that a lot of streamers are covering, like big streamers, like Market Pilot, big, like super big YouTuber. He has to have like, he's, he's in, he's, he's in the eight figure. He's, he's in the eight figure, high sevens, low eight figure YouTubers. You know, so in terms of subscribers, millions in terms of subscribers. And you know he uploaded there. They constantly age restrict his content. And age restricting drastically reduces your view count because you know that the children are where the money is at. Like an example is there's this kid. He I, a couple of years ago I saw an article of this kid. He reviews toys. Like companies will send him toys. He reviews them for other children, and he was making like ten million dollars a year. So you see where I'm going with the money potential with having your content be e for everyone. Yeah. So when they age restrict him, it completely walls off children from watching his videos. And he edits his videos in a way that it's or just underage, or just underage. Anyone underage, underage. You know, that's where that's that's where the money. That's where a lot of the money is at. So they just they'll just they'll just gimp him by age restricting his videos. So you know he contacted YouTube and was like, hey, you know all these big YouTubers who are not black, they have this same clip in the horror movie in the horror game. That you're saying is the reason why I'm age restricted. Can you fix this? You know what I mean? He contacts them. Eventually, they're like, they panic. They're like, and he, and, you know, they don't do anything. And then they're just like, you know, he contacts them again. He's like, hey, like this is, I'm gonna expose this. Like this is racist. This is like this is uncalled for. All of a sudden, they go to Marco Polo's video and just age restricted. They just go across the board. And it was just basically like, this 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 Negro is onto us. <laughs> so you know, he was just saying it's just he he felt like it's just like. I'm getting a little bit, people, people on YouTube felt like I'm getting too famous too quickly. You know, we can't let too many of them get in high places on our platform. So we have to had to limit him. And it just went super viral. I mean, he's already famous. Anything he does is on trending. So this just went gangbusters viral. Talking about how they're, how they're gimping him and limiting him on the platform by putting these restrictions on him. Almost like soft, like soft ways to cap his growth because he was growing, they thought he was growing too quickly. And then they, the way they react, it lets you know that they know it was wrong. But I want to know what you think about it. I thought that this was trending because I think the, the, the thing I saw was like there was some girl on Twitch. Is this, is this the same situation? Is this the same guy? I, I think, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I might be the same guy, but I watched this video. I watched the whole video and that's the gist of what I got from it. There was this girl on Twitch that ended up like, apparently she was doing some sexually explicit shit mm -hmm. some sexually explicit stuff on her twitch stream and she got banned for it was like she got banned for like a, a week or something it was a small little punishment small little ban small little suspension 
and everybody in the comments was like or everybody that was using that that hashtag was saying like free i think it was this guy free cory whatever i think it was this guy see i don't know th- i'm telling you i don't know the whole history if not I, that could the be dude a is whole black. the dude is yeah, black, black whoever yeah. they were talking about i'm saying whoever yeah, it, they were talking it probably about was, if this is recent it probably is it was like within the last couple of days is, yeah so i didn't even i didn't even know about this whole thing but i'm sure this happened after he posted a youtube video i remember i watched this like on wednesday last week and they took the video, video down right that i don't know i saw that they took the video down like they uh, banned can, the video, bro. We can. I'm telling you, I will look it up right now. I got. I'm already typing. What did he do? I watched the video. And all he did was expose them. No, it's still up. Oh, okay. Then I think views. I'm thinking about. It. I think I'm looking at a different guy. Then. So that means it's happening be, with another dude. Then it might be. Yeah, but it, dude, they 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 shadow ban us. They limit us. Like that's a real thing on these a lot of these platforms. You know, when you look at a lot of these platforms. The creators who created the music are black. And then the white creators who rip it off and steal it, they get to get on Ellen. They, they get, get to be the on trendy. the front page of TikTok. But the people who created the music and created the, the hits, they don't get anything. Mm-hmm. That's deliberate. That's real. A lot, of the, a lot of There's so many talented black creators who should be the face. And, you know, a lot of the racism and, 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 and hatred and jealousy, they don't want you up there. They're cool with someone else ripping you off, though. I think the thing that's weird about it is that like they always have a wall kind of like a firewall protection where they can say it's the algorithm mm-hmm. we saw it's not necessarily related but just in terms of like you can always blame it on the algorithm the facebook situation with the fake news remember that situation mm-hmm. where facebook was ha- had all this fake news going through people's timelines and they did nothing about it and what they ended up doing when they actually had to get, they had to show up for uh, a deposition in Senate court was, oh yeah, our algorithm. Like we, but then eventually it gets exposed and they have to do, they have to correct changes or whatever. But I don't know if YouTube, I don't know if Google is on that level to where they would have to change it. What are they saying in, res- like has they, have they responded to this? I don't think they've responded at all to it. So what if he's a know. 7 million uh, subscriber dude, he, does he twist him at the, all? We can get the exact numbers. I fucked up, bro. He has fourteen point two million subscribers. He's a huge. Last, he's a huge. He presence. was blowing up because I swear to God, I checked last year and he was like six, seven million. I I know that for sure. He's a huge presence. So yeah. my question is like, at what point do they need to respond? Will they ever be forced to respond? Like, is there any precedence th- for this? Has this happened before? It definitely has happened before because black creators I watch, even smaller creators talk who are like really radical, you know, talking and they're like Black Panther, like they're like new black media people. They talk about harassment from YouTube all the time where they'll just, their channel just randomly get banned and it'll just be cited, they'll cite some bullshit. So they have to fight for a week or two to, they have to fight for a week or two to get their channel back. Or channels who have a lot of momentum who are like more radical, they'll, they'll every month it's like, oh, I was getting 10K subscribers a month. And then something happened. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. I was only getting two subscribers a month. Yeah. Shadow ban. Like, mm-hmm. shadow bans are real. Yeah. Where they're just a YouTube mod who might be a racist or who might be whatever. It's just like, oh, we can't. Uh, they, I don't like the message they're spreading. And they'll just press a button. And now, all of a sudden, they, they altered how the algorithm sees you. And now, yes. you just don't get any engagement. That is Or proof. now, your subscribers do not get notifications when you stream or when you post videos. Very dirty and very shady. Shadow banning is real. Don't kill me, but I do need to take a a, a devil's advocate position just for the sake of the conversation. Are they in the wrong for doing that? Because their excuse is going to be, and this doesn't, just because I'm bringing up this point doesn't mean that this is my stance. I'm just saying it for for the sake of conversation. Sometimes it's necessary just to develop more of a complete conversation just to take the the devil advocate stance. If you're looking at a private company, even though it's public, but you know what I mean. If you're looking at a privatized company and you're saying, and they're saying, this doesn't abide by, this doesn't represent us, or whatever their excuse is going to be, you can come up with a million different excuses, right? Do they have, obviously legally they have the authority to do so, but do they have a reasonable position to say, this doesn't align with our values? we're going to shadow ban this stuff. 
Can you argue that? Can you argue against that? This is my problem. The problem, my problem is the race. If you're gonna, sh- well, the race, because you know it, it's it's very. But it consistent. happens to other white. It happens to white people too. Or I'm sure it happens. Well, it happens to other I'm sure it happens too. to the white radicals who talk crazy too. But you know, and they just want to take the current system to an even higher extreme. The black ones wanted to fuck the whole system. Period. Both are radical. But what I'm saying is, you should at least tell someone, hey, it, and it might not even be called shadow ban, but it might be called like they have to let you know. They don't even tell you. It's just one month to the next, you look at it and all your stats are fucked up and you're not doing anything different. You're not doing anything different and now all of a sudden people are coming out of the woodworks who are fans of you saying like, hey man, I didn't get the notification. All the so, people are saying, I didn't get the notification. So Even though I have it toggled. Do you think if they let them know, if they communicated that? If they communicated that, like, hey, we're shadow banning you. Even if they're not gonna change their mind, that would be a lot better. Still be fucked up and racist, but it's a lot better than just trying to pretend like you're not doing it. But see, the problem is that they tell you that you're doing it, that could be a problem. Then it could be like, hey, you're limiting free speech, or hey, like it could go, so they kind of have to. They bite themselves in the ass. They bite themselves in the ass almost. They're telling you. You have proof. Yeah. You have proof that they're like, hey, yeah, we're like, we're treating you unfairly on this platform. See? That's why we need our own platforms. No, no, I want to get too deep into yeah. that conversation. That's another we don't want to get too deep. Another day. I s- s- tell you right now, we get some Silicon Valley black folks who are disgruntled with, you know, how they're being treated, and they're like, "Fuck it, we're gonna just make the anti twitter anti TikTok, anti Twitter, and we're gonna bring the culture." Those dudes better be anonymous. That's because if you fuck with the money, it's trouble. But we're probably gonna cut that out. We're gonna cut that out. That's okay. That's just me. That. That's all. That's off the record, just for me and you. But I really believe this is like off the record. I'm cool with cutting this out. You want me to cut but, it? I can mark. Yeah, it. I want you to cut. I want you to cut it. But like off the record, if like Black Silicon Valley people were to just came together, it was like we're making anti TikTok, we're making anti Twitter, and it was like high quality because you you can't just make it black owned and it's not high quality. It's like it's extremely high quality. It competes with all these other platforms and it's black owned, and the culture leaves all these racist platforms. And goes on there. It, they better. I swear to God, people are gonna start ending up missing and dead because they're fucking with the money. Because we're the culture. We 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 drive American culture. If we had our own platform that was highly competitive, and we left, the culture, the black folks, the root left, the salt left, so the seasoning Twitter. left. It's, it's, it's over. Instagram done. Instagram it's done. over. And that's what I'm saying. Like they better be anonymous. Because it's over, <laughs> they're gonna try to kill them. Like because the the money is the money's gonna start drying up. Oh, we gotta get these Negroes off the map. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm I, I, that's like one of the things I think about all the time. Like if we had our own social media platform that was highly competitive, and the black folks said, "Oh, it's black owned," boom, we out. And out. these these ads start cratering. They be trying to kill the they be trying to kill the, the developers because they're not gonna play fair. It's 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 meritocracy until you start getting your ass whooped. Then you start bringing out the guns. So, that's all I gotta say about it. We can cut that out, but that's all I gotta say. <laughs> I'll just I'll just censor some of it or something. I don't know. I probably won't cut too much. Then the goalposts start moving, but yeah. We're going to head into some of this rapid fire topics. I definitely want to start with that black hole. Pause. Oh my God, dude. Pause. Pause. <laughs> is, that, is that pause worthy? Kind of. It is kind of pause worthy. Pause. I'm done. <laughs> I def- yeah, we're going to start. So NASA, was it NASA? I don't know. If it, yeah, probably NASA, right? I guess. Uh, there was a NASA release, I guess, of what a black hole apparently sounds like. This is all air quotes, because I don't believe it. You don't believe it? Why not? Because how do you... They said this was like millions of light years away. How do you address... And they said that it was like some gaseous 
explosion came by a telescope or a satellite or some bullshit like they come up with some like crit maybe it's just too scientific for me to fucking understand but i don't believe it i don't believe it how do you well, find the article i read says that it's a misconception because people are like well i thought you people couldn't hear you scream in space that us speaking is just our, our reverberating off the mo- molecules in the air on earth so yes. if you're in space there's a different composition because it's a vacuum you can't they're not going to hear you scream but apparently they said that i guess whatever gases are around the black hole it's different like it's it allows for the sound there to be sound they can and they they, they edited it though they also edited it so they can be heard by human ears bullshit so they play with it so it sounds like bullshit it's too it's not raw it's not raw like it's not raw it just it's not like you were out there and you just hear the noise like it just sounds like they picked up picked up some kind of frequency, some kind of sound, and they tweaked it so that we can hear it. But it's creepy. Do you have the sound bite loaded up? You can probably just type it on YouTube. You I don't it. have it. It, it, it. You can look. You can look it up if you want to hear it. It just sounds like fucking like a. It just sounds movie. like souls. It just sounds. It literally how I imagine hell sounding without like the the lava and bubbling flames. That's how I imagine hell sounds. Hell ain't shit. <laughs> I think it's bullshit. Seriously, I think that a lot of this stuff that they supposedly fine in space is bullshit i also think like why are we so focused on space when there's a whole another level of underground terrain that we've never discovered and the ocean for that's ocean. that's what i'm talking about we don't know a goddamn about the ocean for the most they part just fucking they just <laughs> fucking all of a sudden found dinosaur footsteps in a river i saw that yeah dude we need to be focused on the ocean we're killing our oceans for one but i think we need to be focused on the ocean because like Deep sea life, talking about looking for aliens? Just go in the ocean. Go in the Marianas Trench and just build better tech that can survive the pressure. And just go down there and look. You'll find your aliens. Like, they're not aliens, but you'll find some wild-looking, crazy-ass, alien-looking, like, Hollywood could never come up with designs for more bizarre-looking shit. Have you seen The Abyss? I've never, I don't think I've seen it, but I can imagine there's some cre- creepy shit in that movie. That's what it's, the abyss is about. They just go in, they discover some abyss, literally. And it's, uh, what's that nigga's name? Fuck. Ooh, what's the guy's name? Who's the guy in Die Hard? How did I forget his name? Uh, uh, Bruce uh, Willis. Bruce, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, yeah. And he goes into this abyss, and they just meet aliens. It's basically Arrival. Remember the movie Arrival? Yeah. But underwater. So they, they find, like, Atlantean... Is it, like, aliens, or these are, like, Atlantean creatures? Like, type it's, thing. It's, like, um... They're, like, energy aliens. Okay. Like, I don't know how to explain it. They're not, like, walking beings. Like, it's not like they're, like... They're, like, ethereal ET. kind of beings. Yeah. Like, it kind of, or, like... kind of reminds me of that Rick and Morty episode where they were, like, looking for, like, that gas being who was, like, a fugitive. And, like, Morty saved him. And come to find out, he was trying to release his brethren from a dimension to, like, conquer over, like, the, like carbon-based mortals he's like a gaseous based mortal and he you know what i mean kind of like that he's like kind of energy but he was like gaseous and he had like yeah. energy balls it's something like that it's something like that but we're gonna find yeah. shit down th- they're hiding it they're hiding it well I you know, we have that. a we have a friend and i've watched a lot of documentaries and listen i keep my mind open i consider myself to be agnostic i'm spiritual agnostic spiritual meaning there's two different possibilities, I think, period. No matter what you believe in them for afterlife, the brain produces consciousness or the brain receives consciousness. Now, produces consciousness is one thing, but receives consciousness can literally be an infinite possibilities of what we really are and what, if there's gods and what, it can be literally anything. So I'm on that end of we receive consciousness, but I don't, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So I believe that there are beings that come to this planet like we have a friend who says that they're like aliens they live deep sea like they come in on their ships they go deep sea and they build bases and they they live under there and they survive in there and some of them actually like swim, swim, swim around with their technology i believe that they have the remember the like the ufo videos that came out in 2020 yeah they have video of these ships or crafts whatever whatever you want to call them these pieces of technology flying around and where do they go in the fucking water. Yeah. They disappear in the fucking water. Guess well, what else? Like most of the civilizations down there, I'm sure. Most of those 
I think it was the Navy that was following. Like, obviously, I think it was the Navy that was uh, recording these, like literally recording them, like on video. They were always over water. Dude, I believe it. I'm telling you, that's that's the real classified unknown. You know, they're like, hiding we're shit, about, yo. They, no, they're hiding, and this is the reason. Crazy thing, I watched a documentary today, right? And it's like. Fuck, man. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. But the only point I want to get from this documentary, and it's related to what it's related to what we're talking about, is that the government hides the technology that they have. They act like they don't have technology that can withstand the pressure to go down there. They definitely do. They definitely have technology to go down there. They might actually have contact with these beings that live in the, live in the or ocean. Or at least further than we've been before. You know? Yeah, I at always least further think than it, we know. I always think of it like... At the very least, let's say the, what is it, like uh, 5,000 meters below is like the furthest you can go or 50,000 meters, 35,000 meters below or whatever the fuck the number is. Right. I always think of it as this. We've gotten advanced enough for you to at least, at the very, very least, do the same way that you do when you send up satellites and the, 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 the rockets or whatever, they just blow up in the, fucking, in the fucking space and you don't care what happens to them. You could do something similar to sending shit down below. So you send some craft down below that you know is going to get completely fucking incinerated, just wrecked, not incinerated, but just wrecked, just crushed under the pressure, right? But you can send something below to where when they reach that point, it can survive for a certain amount of time to capture a certain amount of imagery, or maybe you just take a thermal scan or whatever the fuck, and over time you start to develop some type of map of what's going mm -hmm. on below. You can at least, at the very least, do that. They're fucking telling us some shit that's some bullshit. I Dude, I'm telling you, like, the and government, like, I, I watched a documentary today about they have this tech called Stingrays. Sting, they've had this since the 90s, where they can drive around and they can create a fake cell tower, a portable fake cell tower. So it's a criminal, they want to get his ass. He's talking on his phone. Let's say he has a, a phone, like cell phones. This is even pre, like, cell phones, where they have these little things they plug into their computers that connect to cell towers and they can get kind of early internet and they were able to like drive around a criminal's house steal his cell signal because it would go from instead of going to the cell tower it would go to his car and record all his conversations if they've had this shit since the 90s you know they know how they they know they know they've mapped the sea floor the deep sea floor and we just don't know i feel like the military is like 20 to 40 years ahead of what we what consumers have typically yeah. They know what's going on. That's that's the only point I wanted to make by talking about stingrays. Is like, if they had that tech that long ago, and people didn't start really knowing about it till like the 2010s, the stingrays. Yeah. What do you think they have now? And they, they just let they just on. drip it. They they drip the technology to us. They drip feed it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, here here's a cellular device. Oh, here's a cellular device that works without a wire. Oh, right. here's a cellular device with buttons that you can send messages to people and when they give it to you they're already on the next one right when they give it to you it's like this shit is obsolete they but probably consumers drip feed can it. have it they probably mm -hmm. drip feed it for sure for sure because even like things like electric cars have been studied since the 70s or 80s maybe beyond i'm pretty sure they were studying electric cars when the first when model t i i swear to god i watched a documentary it just wasn't practical enough yet but, but they like knew. they they knew about like they understood like it was like a thing like and then when it they gets had to that early point models of it of sophistication then it's like all right 10 more years no more just all electric vehicles so yeah all right rapid I fire I swear to god rapid fire rapid fire uh you wanted to talk about the china heat wave yeah i, I didn't want to get and this is rapid fire i didn't want to get into it but there was like a there's a continuum there was a continuous heat wave going on in china and you know there was concerns about supply chain issues because people shouldn't work in these conditions. So factors shutting down could lead to mass supply chain issues. And that just kind of you know people are talking about I'm just like and it's kind of focusing on like but nobody's focusing on the environmental a environmental aspect. Like in Pakistan right now there are floods that are so intense, apartment buildings are being snatched from the land and they're just going with the flood. So I kind of want to go to a more environmental standpoint rather than focus on the capitalist. Oh, we, we have to wait four or five weeks for our item versus the planet is dying. You crying about you're not getting a product in time. The planet is dying. The oceans die. We're dead. Oceans, the oceans, 
And the plant life in the oceans are responsible for temperature regulation. They die, we're fucked. Well, extreme Elon heat Musk, waves and extreme cold. Like, you're just going to get roasted. Elon like, Musk says apparently that he thinks that depopulation. Oh, you don't want me to get started. Or underpopulation, whatever the phrase he uses is, is a bigger threat to humanity than It's a bigger threat to white change. supremacy than climate change. Sorry. We can cut it out. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, when I looked, I was like, can I, I, I hate Elon, bro. Like, but what I'm saying is, like, but he don't talk about the population growth in Africa, though. We don't, they don't talk about that. How all these, everyone else on the planet is not meeting replacement but Africa. Oh my God, if, if these if these guys die off, we're fucked. It's like, well, humanity will continue in Africa, right? But I don't know if he's talking about But you don't, want, you don't want to get into it. Yeah, you I don't, don't want me to go. Talking. But I don't know the if fact that he won't, that. the fact that he won't bring it up recognizes that we are, our humanity is invalidated. I think about it that deeply. The fact that you didn't bring that up doesn't mean you see us as one and the same. Yeah, he's mainly see, talking about Asia. He's mainly right? talking about Asia and Europe and America, whites in America. Right? That's what he's that's what he's concerned about. So they're going to die off. But Africa's going to be fine. Oh. Uh, mm. He didn't talk about that, but I promise you got him a room and they got him to tell you the truth. He get into it. That's interesting. That's an interesting topic. When I saw that, I was like, "Get the fuck out of here, Elon!" I know. I see exactly. Speaking in, tone, in code, I see. I see you, dude. Like I really like. I'm telling you. When I saw that, I was like, "Come on, Elon." But I was all right. We we know, we know your family was engaged <laughs> you and your father, man. I see you. Uh, I don't already? have. I don't have a lot to say about the global warming thing, but, but, but like that hasn't already been said before. Like. Obviously, we're destroying the planet. Obviously, there needs to we need to make more of, a, of an effort to reverse that that track. But is the, I, like I said to you earlier, like I don't. They said that it was reaching like they've been dealing for like the last couple of months with forty degrees Celsius, and I looked it up. The trans the uh, uh, the con- conversion is. 40 degrees Celsius is like 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. 104, bro? Come on. If I was out 104 for like an hour with no shade, I'd be fucked. Bro. That's not even fair. In People SoCal, working, it'd be like working that. 12 hour, Working like 12-hour shifts where it's bounced between 90 and 100. I'm talking about factory. We talking about factory workers. Who, we don't even know if they have AC. And they're loading trucks and going in and out. And Like I did a fact. I worked a shift at a factory. And that shit was hard. Imagine it hot and you may not have AC. I would you die. Outside, you moving shit outside. You're gonna. You're fucked. People die out here too because shit heat waves happen. There was a heat wave down here like recently, and shit gets hot and niggas die. And factories close like, down. Trivializing it, but and supply chain and lead times increase. That's all they were talking about basically. So that's just more of like a cat the capitalist thing, right? It's like oh my god, more the, more the capitalist the economy. Thing like I'm not gonna get my. My my phone that I got from the minerals were mined from from basically slave labor in Africa. Yeah, my slaves aren't working fast enough. They're paying paying pennies on a dollar to get these resources that makes me a tr- my company a, worth a trillion dollars. I know. And we and we just we we have been basically mistreated and abused them, and they get paid ten cents a day. The a global warming day, is kind lucky. of intense though, because it's like how do you go from how do you go from like extreme heat, and then all of a sudden it'll turn around and just be extreme blizzard. Yeah, an extreme hurricane. Is that normal? Like, what are there? Are there? Is there documentation, historical documentation on that type of stuff? That I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not educated to talk about that, but it definitely seems like all over the world we're starting to see the early signs of mass extreme global warming. I think if we don't crack fusion, and we just have desalination and carbon capture plants just running in mass, we're fucked. Like, I think we're at that, at that point. Like, we have to get to the point where we're at carbon negative, where every year we're just sucking the carbon out of the atmosphere and <laughs> turning it into u- useful products. We're kind of fucked. Probably going to have that's to what, be that. That's why I'm thinking, like, people are like, big brain. And I'm, I'm going to do some of this as well. You should be looking for places that are going to be least affected by climate change. Like, people are saying, like, D- is it Duluth, Michigan? Let me look up Duluth. I saw an article. Duluth. That said, Duluth. This is like... Super, this is like super white. 
like super like basically in Canada but in America places like Duluth. Where is Duluth? Why can't I? You would just have to move away from coastal areas. It's in, Miss- it's in Minnesota. Like, it's in Minnesota. The you, Minish- Minish- Minnesota. Then you're just going to get areas. rocked by that good-ass blizzard. And so, the Great Lakes. All those places, like, because they're, they're cold as fuck. I'm sure Toronto's on that list. Like, that area, Great Lakes, Canada kind of area, you know, upper Midwest, those are the best places in the next 20 to 40 years to live. I don't Swear think you God. can escape it. I don't think you can escape it. I think that wherever you go, if this global climate change really is a thing and it's as big of a deal as we say it is, you're going to be affected by it anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, they're going to be affected by it, but those places are typically so cold. The, the degree shift is going to be like, it's going to be nice. Those are going to be, those places are going to be nice. On the water in Duluth, Minnesota. I, I guess I see what you're saying. Cause you're saying, like, oh, it's, it's yeah. a nice temperature. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, but like, what is what is one degree Celsius in Fahrenheit? It increases. That's thirty three degrees. They're talking about Damn. oh, we're on track for one to two to three increases in temperature. You think that's not that bad? And you, and us Americans, you look on Fahrenheit. It's like each degree is thirty three degrees Fahrenheit. What the hell? So we go up two degrees. That's that's over sixty degrees. We're fucked. Pretty People nasty. People don't think about it like that. Pretty nasty. Dude, LA is gonna be wrecked. Arizona, Whew. fuck. These places are gonna be completely uninhabitable. Like, yeah, pretty much. Unless, unless we have, you know, and that's. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful about the future because I think if we crack fusion, billions are going into fusion now. You know, fusion since like the 30s and 40s, 50s, it's like, oh, it's only 30 years away, and we, the years just keep ticking by. Now people think we've made enough breakthroughs that it's like, well, we're only 10 years away now. But how long is it going to be? <laughs> how many how many ten year renewals are it going to be till we crack fusion or we're dead? I think fusion is the only hope for humanity, but I think we're going to crack it. I think quantum computers are going to allow for us to come up with fine materials that can be synthesized that can withstand the heat and and and, and have. I, I see. I don't know. I don't understand the tech enough, but I do know that's you know material science is very important for having stable fusion. If we crack this, then you'll be able to have carbon capture plants desalination so we don't have to worry about water water can be purified salt water can be purified and you know uh what is it uh lab grown meats all that's going to drastically reduce our emissions and think we're going to be fine but i think i personally think we're going to survive but we'll what do you think about lab, lab grown meats you know this is a random topic but we've talked about it before but somebody was like hey nick we, we grew this this bacon in the lab man it's no different than GMO food, uh, uh, fruit or vegetable. Yeah, they're gonna be able to just grow it, and it's gonna be no different. They take the cells and just grow it. And yeah. You got a slab of bacon lard. They grow I've got no bag. problem with that. <laughs> bacon meat. Let's yeah. talk about uh, let's talk about the student loan forgiveness. Oh yeah, and the, and the hypocrites running around crying. But that's basically what I want to get to. Is so obviously everybody knows if you're especially if you uh, have loans. If not, you probably don't give a fuck. But Joe Biden passed a, a nice little decree that he was going to forgive everybody making under 125000 for $10,000 off their student loans for federal uh, student loan debt for higher education. Clap it up. And did you, did you mention the 20 grand for yeah, Pell, Pell Grants, Pell Loans? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then tw- up to 20 grand if you, uh, if you have a Pell Grant. That's that's nice for me because I'm almost wiped out. Hey, nigga, we out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost wiped out. So thank that's you. That's for us, bro. That was for us. I, I sent in a personal message for to Joe Biden. He said, "Oh yeah, nigga, I helped you out." Um, I'm done. <laughs> hey, and he said it with the ER too. Oh Just my so goodness. Fans know. <laughs> nigga soda, <laughs> nigga soda. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just talk about like just give some um backlash back to the backlash that people were giving out for this uh, decree people saying that like obviously like the whole rhetoric is the same every single fucking time where it's like oh this is a handout and you're helping people be lazy and the one thing i think has some validity to it is like well what about the people that already paid off their loans or already started paying off their loans and it's like well too bad for you (laughs) (laughs) yeah and like and and a lot of people saying this they went to school in the 70s and 80s, in 60s, 70s, and 80s, 
when literally, bro, you paid like five hundred a semester. Dude, let's like, stop who gives the fucking fuck? cab. Why do you have to be jealous? Why do you have They're to just, be jealous? It doesn't even make sense to be jealous because it's like your whole education probably costs like ten k or less. And like, or congratulations, four, four or five to ten k, depending on when, how, when they went over and like also, a 30 40 year span period right like, like that is a big point like obviously it was like much much cheaper like the, the 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 amount like look at the fucking chart like pull up the fucking chart of how the escalation of federal education or of uh, uh college education the tuition yearly tuition has just escalated linearly like, and literally just it literally just went, this just went up like that it's like crazy so obviously you have that point there's and no the second comparison point, second point is like why can't you just give yourself and your generation or whoever like the people that have paid off their loans or have been able to pay off a decent amount of their loans like why don't you just give yourselves a nice round of applause like you worked hard and you were able to do it like you completed something you were successful in doing something you paid off your fucking debt like congratulations i don't think that there's anything to be like well if i had to do it you have to do it like that doesn't make any sense like in any other if any other moment of pros, uh, uh, persecution because that's kind of what this is it's like you're forcing people you're essentially saying like oh if you want to get a good job, you have to go into debt. That's essentially what you're doing. That's kind of a, a method of persecution in it's a way. Just, it's a tax on you, man. Like it's 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 a weight. Like it's it's a way to prevent you, keep you in the place they want you to keep you. And it's like if if it's if it's like evil in nature, not evil, but if it's like unethical in nature, or maybe not unethical, but just undesirable in nature, why would you wish some? Why would you wish that on somebody else because you had to go through it? That's like, well, damn, nigga, like. Like, I don't want to make that that brash of a... Uh, I was going to say something terrible. <laughs> but it's like, damn, like, I had to go to war. Like, I got drafted during war. Like, I want everybody else, every generation after me to have a draft. Like, why? Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't wish that on anybody else. Like, you wouldn't wish that harm on anybody else. We live in such a just a miserly, hateful country on all fronts. Yeah, people who just, like, just... They can't stand to see anyone else to get anything, get ahead. You can't stand to can't see us as a society have services that everybody can have yeah that benefits the entire society it just, they're so they're jealous, just so bro. majorly hateful a lot of it is racism they're just they're just so nasty and a lot of these guys are the biggest hypocrites in the world i don't understand which what you're talking about to the I point where i'm pretty sure the white house was posting retweets and i was clips just about to say guys who were like i got pp this loan is for handouts this is blah, 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 blah. and it's like but didn't didn't you we, we pulled this up. You had yeah. 100K. Forgive. Yeah, forgive. Exactly. Crickets. Exactly. All of a sudden, when you when you get in these guys' asses, then it's crickets. That's how you know you. Because they, they run their mouth so fucking much. When you hear crickets, you know you popped them in the mouth hard. You know you popped them in the mouth. Then they, then, then they just they, they lick in their wounds. The one I saw that was speaking like just, just stupid, just stupid shit was Ted Cruz talking about how it's like handouts and if, if you know how stupid he fucking sounds if you're gonna give handouts that kind of is a good impression if you're gonna give um, handouts uh, <laughs> to the barista and she's you're gonna allow her to be lazy and that's just like what are you talking about like where do you get off like where do you get off on this like, do, you, do they get man. paid for saying that type of shit they do they do Do they actually I believe it. I don't listen. I don't know 100, percent but I believe these guys pushing this ridiculous propaganda. There's no way on. There's no way on earth that these people actually believe what they're saying at a certain they point. Do, they do not. They don't. It there's can, a guy. It can't be there's a YouTuber I watch. He's and I watch him sometimes, but I don't watch him all the time. But his name is the Amazing Lucas, and he used to push a lot of like right wing propaganda. Now he's like very neutral. Very very neutral. He looks at he like he's he's he thinks with his own mind. He's very neutral. He looks at both sides and comes up with his own opinion. But back then, he used to talk about how, like, he would go to, like, the Republican conventions with Candace Owens and a lot of these guys, and he would start questioning some of the bullshit. And then Candace pulled him aside and was like, do you want to get this money or not? Yeah. Do you want to get this money or not? Yeah. That's the one that I was like, these guys are getting checks. There's, like, a lot of rich people in power who want to serve the country to be in a certain kind of state. And with certain kind of laws and certain so kind of people in power, check. and they will pay whatever it takes to get it. A lot of these guys are just—they don't believe this shit. They're getting paid. A dude, Nick, dude was like, "Nick, we pay a million dollars if you just start running around acting like a coon and a coon." What are you gonna say? That's really suck a test dick. of like, are you suck with your the, own dick? Are don't you with your people, dick. or are you a, a complete sellout? Don't a lot suck of people a are dick. like, suck your own. Are like, I'm getting, I'm getting my millions. 
They might even be planning when they start to get really ugly, I'm gonna just run to a different country. But they don't care. They care about the dollar signs more. This is what Ted Cruz said. Real risk if if you are that that slacker barista who 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 wasted seven years in college studying completely useless things now has like you told us you told us to go and study completely useless things air quotes right you told us to do that loans and can't get a job joe biden just gave you 20 grand like holy cow 20 grand that you know maybe you weren't going to vote in november and suddenly you just got 20 grand and you know if you can you know get off the bong for a minute and and, and head down to the voting get station the uh, or just send in your mail in uh, <laughs> ballot that the You hear the shot about the mail in ballots like he's trying to yeah. he's still trying to he's still holding on to that narrative of that that lie it was Perhaps proven it helpfully sent you um it could drive up turnout he's talking about mm. fucking uh, poli politics he's talking about turnout in the election cycle are you kidding me this is about people's Dude, livelihoods. You're talking about an election cycle. I'm completely evil and just like, hey, I'm getting paid. I'm just gonna act like a run like a buffoon. So if you're a slacker barista and you're talking about and you're and you're not trying to make coffee, you want to get off the bong. What are you talking about, you idiot? You're a buffoon. You're a buffoon. You sound like a fool, bro. Oh my god, pink pink ass like a fucking baboon. Idiot, idiot. Oh yeah, my like god! I'm getting paid though. It's like it's like a dog getting hey, they're treats. getting that money. Yeah. Hey, I, I do the tricks. Just give me the treats. I do the tricks. <laughs> and, exactly, and, we're, and it's not like it's one sided, because Democrats do that same shit. Democrats no, do Democrats that same have shit. they have they shields running around on some bullshit. Like if like you that, think that this move wasn't political, like Joe Biden didn't want to do this shit. Joe Biden did not want to do this shit. And this is like, a, to me, like I'm thankful. Remember, this is like this is me only having like 28k of loans, right? So that 20k was significant for me, but for somebody yeah. who's in grad school and med school, and they're hundreds knee of thousands. deep in hundreds of thousands. That didn't and mean they a probably goddamn. don't. They probably don't even qualify. They probably don't even qualify. So, where I'm like happy because I got you know I'm under that threshold of 125k a year. I'm happy that I get my money, but for someone that's 126k who put in all the time and all the work to get to that status, but also had to take in hundreds of thousands, years of income to get to that point. They deserve it too. So I, the, like, I believe in an egalitarian, like you want to call me a socialist, whatever, but I believe in more of an egalitarian form of government. It should be across the board. It should be for anybody that qualifies for a, fe any, if you could qualify for a federal loan, if it's like, oh yeah, we'll pay you money so we can get money back then you should be able to pay them back the money that you said you were going to give them if that makes sense that makes sense to me like why wouldn't everybody qualify for that just because you don't want to pay it but you'll spend however many thousands of dollars hundreds of thousands of, not hundreds of thousands of dollars hundreds of millions of dollars on fucking like uh air force ships you want to you want to reenact top gun too you know what i mean so mm -hmm. they can afford it so fucking do it Moving on, Fetty Wap pleaded guilty for his uh, his charge, and I think that's really sad. That's this is sad a man that was so really revered. Makes zero sense. Like you know, he fucked off his money. I don't understand. Like I think if I had that opportunity to have Fetty Wap money, there's no way I wouldn't be worth at least 100 million by now. I don't want to lecture the man. I don't want to sound like I'm lecturing, but. This is a this is a case of you sometimes you have to outgrow the people that you're surrounded by in the beginning yeah. of your come up. Cause they're gonna try to tie you down. And it's not being selfish, it's not being greedy, it's not it's not that you're not looking out for the people that you know, your day ones or whatever like that. You can still take care of people, but you can't be out there trying to show yourself as the person that you are by just buying shit just meaninglessly just to show that you're there for them that you care just because you're in a position of i don't want to call it wealth but you're in a nice financial position that doesn't mean that you need to start just like handing out handouts and that's kind of weird because we were just talking about the handouts argument on, on yeah. the republican side but in this case that's what it is it's like you're giving handouts like if you want to grow with me, if you want to reach this, this echelon that I'm at, 
you need to provide some value. You need to be exactly. doing it yourself. I need to be paying for basically an employee who's providing value. I'm not just going to buy you a fucking car, a $100,000 car I'm just because you're you my this. friend. I'm telling you this right now. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie though. People who've been rocking me from day one, I'm going to hook you up on some level. Yeah, but, but you, not, you cut yeah. them off a little something. Sure. Cut no, I'm going to cut something. you off. I'm going to cut you off some and that's it, bro. I you I don't care how much you ask me for after that. That's it's a no. That's what but it I'm is. I'm gonna break you off some though. Yeah, they go, but yeah. those people, if if you're just constantly, if they're just asking you, you're just hand feeding them, they're going to make you, they're going to make you poor. They're you're going to lose it. Athletes deal with that shit all the time. There's numerous stories there about that. There was an athlete, I, and I don't remember his name, but I remember the story was like he gave his family like an emergency credit card or like an emergency debit card. Like they gonna run that shit up. Is. He checked back. They ran that shit up over a million dollars. Shit. He was like, this is for emergencies. I'm like, that was foolish. Because they don't understand. But you think that you have to take care of them. And you do kind of have to take care of them. I mean, I have a different perspective on family and things like that. Like, I, I, I don't think that just because you're coming from a certain bloodline. No. Mean, that means that you're obligated to take My care of people. My mentality is you, have, you can have family that are not even related to you. I have family members that I wouldn't give a dime. I have family members I wouldn't trust with a goddamn. And I have friends yeah. I trust way more than them. That is, I believe there's something beyond this life. You have people who are spiritual family who are not blood family. And spiritual is more important. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, certain people, I mean, I like to leave it at that. Like, I think certain people, sometimes you got to cut them off. Like, you have to grow past certain people. You know, if they don't want to come along for the ride, then there's nothing I can do with you. You can still be around me you you know you can still be in my life there was a, uh, a, a video that recently went viral of uh, i think it was fat joe and he was talking about how, like he had like a whole a whole entourage of like the niggas that he came up with and you know they were like gangbangers or whatever and there was money coming into his life just like free money just like hey we want you to be the spokesperson for this brand free money a check written already out for you and because of the people that you still were trying to bring up with you that weren't on your level, whether it be maturity, whether it be um, just the, the value that you provide, whether it be the skill set that you provide, whatever it is, they're not on that level. And because he didn't, he didn't, he refused to let them go. They were blocking, literally stopping, literally stopping the human beings that were trying to bring money into his life and bring abundance of wealth into his life. So sometimes you just got to leave. Sometimes you just got to cut people off, man. I mean, that's, it's, it sounds like I'm being callous or maybe even a little bit selfish, but that's what it is. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, Elliot. When I, when I get rich, I'm cutting you off. Listen, I, <laughs> listen, because, you know, I'm <laughs> like, we're going back to the bone token conversation because I believe that I'm going to get rich off bone. This is off the record. This is on the record. I will you 3x my money. I think in a month I will, t I will, it will, I will 10x. So now I will 30x. I'm telling you this right now on record. It probably will happen. I'm telling you, bone goes up to what I tell you. I'm hooking the homies up. But it's it after that it's cut off. Yeah. I, I, that's what I, I swear to God, I like bone token goes up. I will get you. I will do. We will do the FHA. I will. You got a, you got your place. It's covered like a fourplex. I won't even live there. I have my own house, but I'm gonna get you that and probably get you another property. And then we still gonna do business deals, but like that's it. You can't be hand feeding people, bro. After that, if you fuck it off, that's it, bro. Hey, that's really it. You know what I mean? You, like Jay Z was talking about that too. Like there's a million stories out there of people that have reached a certain level of financial success that say the that say the same shit where. If you if, like, you need to bring value to me. You need to bring the value to me. I can't just hand you every single time you need something. Oh, oh, I got a deal. Like, uh, I could, I can get you this, and I could double it. No, like, where's the value? Like, where's the paperwork? Where's the paperwork? Like, what's the research? Like, you got to bring a value. It, it, it can't just be. It, it can't just be like, oh yeah, we know each other from whatever, from way back. So that means I'm entitled to something just because I know you. Like, no. Ain't no, go there ain't gonna be no entourage. Yeah. You gotta bring value. And then I feel like I gotta before I even really like the like of course you I'm you hooked up but like you know we talking about beyond that like other people I don't even really talk to like that like 
I got to get my shit right together. I got to get my shit set up. I got to get right. my shit set up before I can even imagine helping someone else out. Like, you know, it's like when the planes, when planes crashing and the os- oxygen masks come down. I got to help myself first, man, mm-hmm. before I can even imagine trying to help someone else get their mask on. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of the mentality. Uh, we don't have much else. We could touch on the Nick Cannon tenth child incoming. That couldn't be the closing. I think that should be the closing. Not much to say about it. Uh, all I, I gotta I say, say is this nigga. Somebody gotta find this nigga. A new I'm home. not wishing. Like, listen, I'm not wishing death or anything. All I'm saying is like he kind of moves and acts like a man who's dying. Because this doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like, even Future kind of is like, Future has a lot of kids, but, like, it's a little different to me, it feels, with him. Nick Cannon seems like he's intentionally pumping seed. He is. He's intentionally, like, if I'm yeah. going to be out of here in a year or two, I'm going to leave a big legacy. He just, do, 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 oh, do, 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 <laughs> do, seed. Another child. Do, 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 seed. Another child. Like, I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, is this like three or four this year? Like, what the fuck is going on? He's 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 wilding out. That's that's what's going on. He's wilding out. <laughs> yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> that doesn't seem like the the it actions of a rational man. It seems it like seem somebody normal. who does not is not long for this world. It doesn't seem like that. <laughs> dude. It's like. It, it, it is kind of like somebody like came to him when he was like on his deathbed and was like, yeah. you can run this life back, but you need to pump out 10 children before you can do <laughs> before you crazy. come to hell. He got and was like, I don't know. I watched, you know, like watched he's the self, he, weekend, He's fulfilling a prophecy or something? Like, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Something like he's fulfilling a prophecy because he's just like, this is my mentality. If I was just like rich, successful, like Nick Cannon, known... And, you know, of course, that's a given. You're going to have people on you who are going to want something who might get pregnant and be like, hey, give me my checks now. You know, my thinking is, like, if I fucked up and got to five, four or five, I'm getting a vasectomy. <laughs> oh, he said, said. I'm not. That's I have a, a lot I, of fucking I'm a, kids. That's enough. The fact that this guy, that's what I'm saying. Like, the fact that you don't have a vasectomy by now is that you want this and you might actually be dying. It's he one. It's, he's it's one of the going other to have both. more. He's probably he has so many baby mamas, bro. He's probably going to have more. The woman that's about to have his like. child, he already has children with. He opens. He opens his phone. Child one needs diapers. Child two needs baby formula. Child three needs this. Child four needs that. Calling him. Hey, let's get back together. Let's give it another chance. Child five needs this. Twins on child seven. I don't know if he has twins. <laughs> They need these, and child one is the oldest one, so, you know, or let's not even talk about Mariah's kids, but, like, three, four, and five, you know, the older ones are like, oh, well, they need tuition for school, and they need clothes money, and I'm like, well, how, like, how are you doing this? There's no way he's actually spending time with all of these kids. I have no clue. I have no clue. (laughs) Uh, Yes, sir. That, like I said, was Ray Vaughn and Isaiah Rashad Doghouse. Also came out this week. Check it out. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. That was episode eight. Episode eight in the books. More numerology, bro. This is episode eight. Closing out on 8 28. 28. At 8 38. That's PM. crazy. Ooh, That's the numerology, the synchronicity. Understand me? All our investments shoot through the roof. Get to eight figures. Hey. Eight figures. <laughs> yes, All right, sir. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was Top Tier Podcast. We are closing it out. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Check us out in a couple of days. We will have another episode, episode uh, nine for you guys, premiering on Wednesday. Check it out. Easy to be safe, everyone. Watch that new Game of Thrones if you haven't seen it already, and uh, take care. <laughs>